We are live with the Ham Tag Fan Top 5 for Avalon Hill. Woo. Lots of comments were coming in. Lots of lists. So let's see. What have you? There's a lot of folks in here already, and we'll get to uh, some of them here in a second. Uh, Trevor Just wants a Gunslinger reprint. They'd have to do some work on the mechanics, I think. But uh, what's yeah, been going uh, on? What is this shirt? You got? Vance's. Oh, you got, you got Vance's no barbecue. Few have eat. Many have eaten. Few have died. I'm getting ready to smoke me up some ribs this weekend, so I'm in the mood. I just got back from the butchers. Got some me some St. Louis ribs. Nice. All right. Let's see. So uh, one announcement uh, later today, 1.30 uh, Central Time. I think it's Central Daylight Time because we're in Daylight Savings. Or, um, wait, hold on. 3.30 my time, 1.30 Pacific. Sorry. It's the first live interview I'm having Pacific. And I keep having to do the math the other way. I'm so used to having a guest from Maryland or something. But 1.30 Central Time. 3.30 Pacific. Is that right? I hope they're not in Arizona or you could be messed up. Yeah, I know. Well, I talked to them. Actually, it's, uh, sorry, 3.30 my time, 1.30 Pacific. Oh, my God. That was a terrible, terrible intro. Look at that. I'm still having trouble. Just give me Greenwich Mean Time. That's what I need. But I'm going to – J.C. Connors is going to be on. I've already got it scheduled. So as confusing as I've made it, you can just go look. It's scheduled. You'll see when it goes live at 3.30 Central, 1.30 Pacific. Who finally got it right. And uh, he has a great BGG list that's got a lot of likes to it, where he was there when uh, Avalon Hill in 98 was sold. And uh, so we're going to talk about being there right at the end. I think he was there the last two years. So that's J.C. Connors. We'll have him on. Game designer as well. Now he's into a lot of computer stuff. Yeah, sorry. I'm getting uh, a weird vibration going on here off this box. I'm ooh. dampening the sound. There we go. All righty. Got it. All right, let me do a few shout-outs, and then we'll get in. We'll see who's in here already. There was a lot of folks in before we even went live. So let's see. Trevor was in, of course, very early. He was in uh, almost an hour early saying, let's go Avalon Hill Games for the win. JD's in, uh, Timon 6219, uh, let's see, we got Enrique Romero is in, just saying good morning, uh, Red Dog 19, howdy, so we've got a uh, southern or at least midwestern twang maybe going on, uh, we've got Ron Nicholson is in, also currently flying on Ham Taggery as a co-pilot in the B-17, that's going well. Uh, let's see, Ben Dover is in, that's Ben, and then Dover. Yeah, I know, I saw Jed, Judd start to laugh immediately. It was like Bart Simpson. I, I know some of his friends. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see, uh, what do we got? E oh, it just jumped on me with a comment. Uh, we're going to do a few more of these. we got ERMJ1986, Deplorabus Rex, ham tag he's yelling. I love Deplorabus Rex. So that's just a cool name. Vorpal Bart, Bite, oh, not Bart. Uh, Mickey, what is it, Juif? Hi, I'm a new subscriber. Well, welcome. Everybody, please click the button and subscribe. Sometimes I come on at weird times with the live uh, shows based on either when I'm available or when the guests are, or if it's just me. Charles Latora, Bill Atterbury, um, Spirit Wolf, Gobel Jr., Bongo Gorilla, Gorillio. I don't know. I always say Bongo Gorilla. He is in also. Um, does great after action reports on my Patreon uh, after each B-17 mission. I think I've got everybody. It jumped once. Yes, I believe I've got everybody. So, Judd, anything? What do you, what's on your game table? And then I'll share the uh, comment screen for YouTube and we can talk about the fans. Well, Barbarossa has been at a stall. I haven't even touched it all week. I wrote a c3i article this week and that thing was it was pretty dog doggone big and um i mean big task for me i don't I'm not saying it's a huge article but um 
anyways, but my main purpose of it was I paid my daughter to edit it because she's a grammar whiz and I'm trying to teach her entrepreneurialism. I keep right. telling her charge the kids at school. Um, so um, she, yeah, she, oh my, I, I meant to bring it down and hold it up. Boy, the first page just bled red. Really? <laughs> she just tore oh, it up. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's funny is compared to most engineers, I'm a I'm a I'm pretty darn good at grammar. I used to clobber them in tech writing class, and whenever my company would start to send in the old days before they got tech writers on board, they'd send out um, announcements, and I'd look at them and then mark them all up and send them back to them, and then they'd start arguing with me. It's like, dude, you don't know what a parallel structure is. Um, so um, anyway, the um, so yeah, I did that for her, and yeah, she made it. She's stylistically far. Oh, here we go. <laughs> she handed it to me. Nice. Um, yeah. Oh, First my. page. Yeah. Wow. Woo! And you know, you know, you know about parallel algorithm. What did you say? What was your deal? Parallel, parallel structures, structures, dangling modifiers, stuff like that. Um, you're a, you're, but, a, you're um, a Superman on the dangling. But yeah, she. Uh, <laughs> Now, stylistically, she she made that thing. What some, some of her markups were, you could word it this way, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's way better. So, um, anyway, she's she's a stud. So, at that, now so this, um, this article for C three I is all about. I am assuming your development on France for 1944 strategies. Strategies, okay. So it's yeah. not a development article; it's a strategies article. Yeah, it's geared for the two people, those who just can't figure out what to do to start it, you know, the analysis paralysis crew. So I like do, here's exactly how you do the opening moves. And my, this, I give out the option, say, here's what I do, but here's your odds if you wanted to do stuff like this. And, you know, your turn two goals are this, your turn three goals. And I say, just play the first three turns over and over and over until you can run this thing well and see your screw ups. Then you want to do the, you know, I give some general outlines of, this, this is what you want to be on the lookout for as you move toward the Rhine as the allies, or if you're trying to stop them as the Germans, you know, I'm not doing the whole end game thing by that point, you should have it figured out. But, um, so I, you know, Roger McGowan asked me if I wanted to do that. And generally I don't want to write a big, <laughs> big article, but Hey, I'll do it to help my daughter. So, um, anyways, so yeah, it was, a, it was a good experience, but I've been telling you, yeah, you need to be charging them kids at school. Tell them how, how much, how much is that a worth to you? <laughs> you know, Deploribus Rex agrees with you 100%. Oh, yeah. Hey, Bart, I had a couple things here before I forgot. Yes. I was going to tell folks I'm not selling. I'm not advertising for them. I'm not, I just saw the, the um, announcement come today. Thought people might be interested. If you are familiar with In Magnificent Style by, by the late great Victory Point Games, oh, if not, solo game on Pickett's Charge, you play Pickett's. Uh, anyways really cool game by Herman Lutman. And, you know, Hey, people are like, Hey, victory point games is gone. Um, so, um, sorry, the messages miss with me. Anyways. Um, what, 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 yeah. Hold on. yeah, Trevor just says you got a nice haircut. Jed. Like I got them all cut. <laughs> um, now that, um, anyways, that thing's out. So, you know, people are like, Oh, bummer. They're out of business. I can't get it. Worthington just picked it up, launched a Kickstarter this morning. I think their Kickstarters usually go two weeks. It's supposed to be like a deluxe version. I don't. I didn't. I just skimmed it. I already have it. I'm really pleased because I got the gold banner edition. But for people who don't have it, hey, there's your chance. Really good game. It's literally just how do you gain Pickett's Charge? I know it's the third day Gettysburg. Oh, that it's that game. Press your luck. Um, mm -hmm. When you move, you, you draw chits out of it, and it'll tell you. Um, it'll tell you what happens. And, you know, you, you, you do those things, you have to roll dice. And um, what happens is if you get, um, you're trying to press forward and some rolls will allow you to move forward. Some are, t are giving you hits as you're going. Your different uh, brigades, I believe it is. And um, anyways, as you move forward, um, if you get a, I don't remember what it, what it was called. Um, oh, it's like a... Uh, it'd be like a what, disorganized or something. I don't remember what it is. But if you get a second one, you have to go all the way back to the beginning, or you can stop and then move your rally point up to that point. You know, if you route, you have to go all the way back. So it's how much do you feel like pressing that luck? And it goes on about five turns. And as you're going on, you're just getting pounded and pounded. And then as you get closer, it becomes more intense. Um, so it's a pretty slick game. 
I mean, it's, and it's plays about an hour. So it's, you know, you're not on the hook for a long time, but um, very easy game to play. But yeah, if you like to press your luck with dice, which that's, that's, that's nice. a big thing. For me. Well, I love, all 23 hairs. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I love can't stop. There's a uh, quintessential plastic press your luck game. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we use that at my wife's board gaming project all the time where, where families come in. And it's amazing the amount of people that have never even heard of a press your luck. I mean, they don't understand the mechanic. So, well, cool. Good. We'll do that. So go check that out. You said Worthington's putting that out? Yeah. I just got the email today and I was like, oh, that's cool. I was going you know, the designers all have the rights to their games from Victory Point Games. So they've been um, – the oh, Worthington ran the um, – lot. oh, what do they call it? Um, oh, I should have uh, – wait a second. I have a shortcut set up to it. I thought mm – -hmm. oh, Dawn of Battles. It's the old um, Ancient Battles Deluxe by Victory Point Games. Gave it the big treatment. I guess it's going to be a multi-game series. Um, I forget the designer's name. He's the guy who did the War of the Wind Battle of Vatu by Compass. Um and he did. Oh, Mike Nagley, I think's his name. Anyways, mm -hmm. I backed it because I really liked the Atu game, and this game seemed to have pretty decent response. I like what they were doing with it. It's a nice little alternate for great battles of history or, or um, uh, Command and Colors Ancients. So I thought I'd give it a look. But some of those guys have been shipping them around to other companies. Well, now, uh, Brooklyn, the Price of Luck was a TV game show, or show, I think. Watch out for the devil. I remember no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. No I mean, whammies, yeah. That was a pressure luck show. But those are shows. Yep. All right, let's see. I see some other comments. Very good. There's one more that's kind of large in here with Timon. Magnificent style is a solitary game depicting the final desperate Confederate attack on July 3rd, 1863. At the Battle of Gettysburg, you command the Confederate brigades that made Pickett's charge. That's interesting. I'll tell you what, if you ever find yourself in South Central Pennsylvania, go to Gettysburg. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, but wow, it's really cool. You said, you know, they even got like a little tower built up so you can stand and look over the battlefield. And I was telling my daughter back when he went in 17 about, can you imagine trying to charge, go across that thing? that far knowing all those guns are aimed at you. And then, you know, we, when we got to the other side, we were on the union side and looking at, um, you know, we little round top, all that. We went through that and, um, you know, devil's den cornfield, all that. But when you got up there, it's funny. I saw a sign. I was like, what? I was like, dude, that's the angle. So I showed her the angle and I was like, yeah, you get here, you're in a crossfire. And the game depicts that when you get in the angle, you take extra damage. Hmm. So very, very cool. I've been there uh, twice. First time my, do uh, my daughter and I went, and the next time the whole family was there, so we all went. I need to get there. So, because it's, uh, how far away is it from D.C.? Like an hour and a half? Um, you know, I've never been to D.C. Um, I've been to I can tell you, about, I want to say it's like an hour and a half from Philadelphia. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, I've been, I've been to, to Philly a bunch of times. A couple of times, but. Yeah, I need to get out there and see that. So, oh, Bongo, he's been to Gettysburg. Lots of statues and cannons. Yeah, each, I mean, there are so many from the different states. With, you know, I found the Kansas Monument. It's a little dinky thing. But, um, yeah, like, oh, the shoot, imagine the Virginia one's huge. The Pennsylvania one's huge. And, like, almost like build, a couple of them, like, building monuments you can go into. Um, but, yeah, they're, it's pretty impressive. Hmm. Let me get that off of there. All right. So let me let me share the screen and we'll get into this because there's been quite a lot of comments that have come in. Uh, let's see. Wow, I had a lot of extra stuff opened up. It should be this one here. If it's wrong. Nope, that is it. Good. And then it was weird as I was. Now why is that there? So I'm going to need to pop in here. Hold on. Get that off. Why is that on there? That's irritating me big time. Huh. Why is that even there? Come on. There we go. You see it? Oh, I was getting my I was getting a double window set up for myself. There we go. 
Ah, so I had a little sub screen open. So here's uh, Matt Curiosis. Um, let's see. He actually had, there was a whole bunch of sub comments that I will mention just right now. So, of course, Patton's Best was on my list. And it was. Oh, hey, are, are you sorted by newest or? Well, I tried, and that's what I was telling you. I couldn't get it to sort at all. I did it by newest, and it was all jumbled. So right now, um, okay. it's going to be wild and jumbled because I couldn't get it to go, and we're not going to do it live. Okay, so, I think I'm synced up with you. Okay. All right. So um, Matt put in here, not only do they have Guderian's Best, you can find all this on BGG under Patton's Best, by the way. So I always thought it would be a better game from the German's perspective. But uh, several commenters, and Jack is another one that we'll get to, let me know that it's not Stalin's best. It actually had a couple different names. Uh, I think Panov's best, or Mikhail, or Mikhail Panov was the uh, guy, and then they call it Zukev's best, I think. But all on BGG, under Patton's best, I believe, in the file section. So you can play from the Russian side or you can get Guderian's best and play from the German side. Of course, you got to do a little work on the side in order to get all that to work. But I would love to do that. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do that, but I would love to. So let's get to uh, Matt's list. His top five are squad leader number five, Kingmaker, B-17, Queen of the Skies. Way to go. That makes me like Matt even more. Midway with the Pacific Theater uh, via the Midway expansion and Jutland. Now, we're not going to go through uh, some further comments. What we always try to do or what I try to do is just hit the list and uh, kind of breeze through them. All I played the, I've owned all the others, but I never played Jutland. No, that was one of their older games, too. I've yeah. actually, uh, because of the history I'm doing, I'm reading um, uh, Shaw's book right now, and it's a little kind of self published book. But we won't talk about that right now. So we got Nano Rider 426, and this is Hans Pizza Bach, who likes to go by HP, and he is one of my waste gunners because he's a Patreon supporter. But his list, and I'm going to go backwards here, is Blackbeard. I'm not going to do his one, two. Blackbeard is five. You and I need to play that, and just so you know, there's a buddy of mine who is uh, – he works with the WSU ROTC program, he has it. He loves to play it. He would love to come in and play that with us. Just be careful. You really don't want to get beyond two players on that game. You'll get a really? lot of doubt. You yeah. don't want beyond two. How about three? Three is not the sweet spot? No. Actually, I've heard. I mean, that's the comments I've seen. I I usually play it um, So I mean, I, every time I played it, it's solo, and I'll play multiple players solo. But So I don't care about the downtime because I'm always playing, but – I can see where it really gets into downtime. I've heard if you get beyond two players, it can get painful, especially four. So right. just be well, warned. Well, before we do three, then you and I shall maybe try to play it just with us at some point in time and see how that goes. What is real cool, and I was about ready to watch him do this with the ROTC cadets, and then COVID hit. He had to cancel it. He uses the game Ranger. And he actually mm -hmm. runs them through the game. So they're, they're doing a tabletop scenario with other folks, seniors, I believe, running the comms and the intel and uh, feeding them in information. And, and they send them out different ranger groups and they have to call in for exfils and all kinds of stuff, medevacs. So I almost got to see that. And I was going to film it and put it on a show. And COVID hit, making 2020 all that much greater. Let's see, four is Britannia, three is Empires in Arms, two is Advanced Civilization, and then one, Russian Campaign. And again, I think this GMT is redoing that, by the way. I have seen that. It's on their list to be done. Because isn't that yeah. isn't a Simonich game? No, 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 that's before him. I don't remember who it was, but I what? thought John Kranz was working this, but he wasn't the designer, but I, I don't know what the story is there. Have you ever played Source of the Nile, by the way? You had this in his honorable mentions. No, hearing, I haven't. I'm hearing it's good. I haven't played Britannia or Empire of the Arms or Advanced Sif in there. I've heard of those three. You know, I don't but, have Britannia, but I have uh, Maharaja, which is, my understanding, kind of based on it, um, but obviously around India. And I would like to play that, too. Doing all this Avalon Hill stuff, uh, Jeb knows this. I went opened a box 
an old box that just said Avalon Hill. And it was stuff I'd either bought originally that I just wasn't playing, or there was a period in time in 2006 where I was going on eBay and buying lots. Uh, and I don't mean a lot. I mean, I would buy like a lot of 12 Avalon Hill games and they would say mixed lot and you would see a photo and I would want two or three games out of it. And I ended up with a bunch of different Avalon Hill games for very reasonable prices. Man, but, Aaron told me a story about um, there was like, in, I think it was an estate or something in town and they didn't know what they had. So they were posting them and they, I think they were putting them for five bucks a piece. Woo! And they'd post one for five bucks and Aaron and Cliff click buy it now. And he said it's kind of late one night. Next one to go up, buy it now, buy it now. And then the people were in Wichita, so he got it all shipping free. Wow. And I think he spent, I don't know, like 60 bucks. And then he spun a couple of them off and made like 200 bucks off of them. They were pretty, you know, kind of those valuable ones and got him a nice little set of stuff in there and, you know, extras and, I it's used to go to stuff. estate sales when I had Thursdays off and I would just go to them and I would always wander in and see any board games. And sometimes they'd go, yeah, downstairs. I picked up some old TSR games that way. Hmm. All right. We've got Kevin Beer, B-R, B-I-R-W, uh, his favorite Avalon Hill games, five, Stalingrad. He got it uh, when he was 12. That was 50 years ago on July 26, 1970. So uh, his birthday's tomorrow. And the coolest thing for Kevin is my birthday's July 28, 1970. So way to go, Kevin. We're just two days apart. Four is St. Nazaire. Love it. Obviously on my list. Three is Panzer Blitz. That was their best all-time seller. Uh, yep. 300,000 roughly of those. Uh, two Battle of the Bulge 65 version. Yeah, they end up redoing it in 81. That's the version yep. I have. Uh, and then uh, one Advanced Squad Leader. So he, he is an ASL man. Here is Jack. So Jack in this here talks about, of course, Stalin's best. And uh, we've given all the corrections. He gives his own correction down here that uh, that it's actually called... Oh, I can't even see it now, but it was part of the Battle Magazine, and it was issue number six. Oh, it said it's called Stalin's Best. It's not though. He later will give a oh. collection on that, and it's the uh, it's the Pavel. I can't remember. It's the one I mentioned. Panos Best. Yeah, Panos. Yeah. There it is. So he does a correction on that. But we have David Wood. Nice clean list. Love this. Five Siege of Jerusalem. Four. War and Peace 3, The Longest Day. I have that and have not played it. I think I'm going to sell it. Two, Hannibal, Rome versus Carthage. One, Russian Front. Man, I've almost grabbed Russian Front a few times. Yeah. Probably someday I will. Oh, Hannibal, I think I mentioned about when I had that card system that for We the People where you could play the battle solo. Mm -hmm. And I'd built an artificial intelligence and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I have bought since then a Windows XP computer tower. So Visual Basic 6 works again for me. So that's on my to-do list is to create a system. Hannibal's a lot tougher than we the people because you got that cavalry card that plays as an irregular event card. It's not a battle card, but you can use it as a battle card. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to think about how to do the AI in there. And um, anyways, just trying to, I've been pondering, letting this, you know, simmer, thinking about how to pull off different AIs. And you might have to decide when to have the battle in because the longer you go, the bloodier it gets for both sides. Great pronunciation of cavalry. Well done. Yeah. I'm work, working on that myself. So let's see. Brent Elliott didn't put numbers beside them. <clears throat> so we'll just say squad leader. Panzer Blitz, I'm sure is what he meant. Russian campaign. Third Reich to Brook. Oh, boy, huge jump. What the heck? What did I, I used do? to have a Brook, but it had a different cover. It's like a limited edition for a, a convention or something. It was kind of a tan cover. If you look under BGG, you can see it. Yep. But. Now, here's what I like. So, Thomas Romanelli. <laughs> yeah, 54321 Titan, 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 Titan. 
And he said, when we weren't fighting, finding dragons in the mountains or giants from the tundra, I don't know if he means finding or fighting, we played panzer leader, original squad leader with the plus one Huffman horrendous to Brook, storm over Arnhem, and the oft overlooked Jim Feudal. I have Feudal, and I have not played it. I got it from the from a 3M group purchase thing I did long ago. You and know, then, I had a chance at that and didn't know anything about it and passed it up as a thrift store. Hmm. Um, I think it's over on Seneca um, near Delano District, but it had a, a, I grabbed the um, Arab Israeli Wars. They had it there for five bucks, and I think Ooh. they had that one for five dollars. And I saw Avalon Hill, but I kept looking at it and saying, ah, I don't think this is a historical war game. I don't know what it is. Shelf space, blah, blah, blah. So ended up passing it up. Then I heard it's kind of a pretty cool game. Yeah, I'm going to have to try it. You know, it showed up here a lot. He says, Thanks for the trip down memory lane. I am definitely enjoying my trip down memory lane. So Trevor Just, of course, we know him well. He's always one of the first ones to sign on when we have a show. So Trevor has five, Rise and Decline of the Third Reich for Hannibal Rome versus Carthage. I have that version, and I have the new version from Phalanx as well. Three is Circus Maximus. His is custom Star Wars pod racer. It's very interesting. I figured Judd would be like, mm -hmm. and that would work great. That'd be a perfect Carryover. And then, of course, we have the great campaigns of the American Civil War and uh, specifically on to Richmond. Very nice. And then one for the people. And he has some honorable mentions, attack sub, which I also want to play, and a few others. I keep hearing 1830 Railways and Robber Barons. Um, I keep hearing that's the one that starts the whole 18xx, you know, stock and rail System. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of those. I, I don't get into a lot of stock buying games, but uh, I hear it is excellent. Um, let's see. I like the list that Ouroboros has here. Five, Third Reich. Four, Russian Campaign. Three, Fortress Europa being reprinted. Uh, I think by Compass, right? Uh, Fortress, yeah. Uh, two, Turning Point Stalingrad, and one, Breakout Normandy, which has the old version, and there's been a new version of that printed as well. And that was at you know, L2P or something, wasn't it? Yeah, you know what's crazy is four of those five games have been reprinted. Let me pop that. Team Cast is the only one that hasn't, that I know of, unless it hasn't, I'm not aware of it. There's a list right above. It's not written in column order, but I'll go on and read them for you. Oh, uh, so you, you, no, no, they will be punished. They will be punished if they don't do them in column order. But go ahead. Go ahead with Scott. Okay. Air Baron, History of the World, Panzer Blitz, We the People, Circus Maximus. <laughs> huh. I'm not familiar with Air Baron or History of the World. Yeah, I've see, I've got History of the World. It, it uh, is supposed to be pretty good, if not maybe politically correct, is my understanding. But I picked it up a long time ago. So There's a good. comment right in between. I, I nefarious Cole about me and merchants and marauders. Yeah. I have looked a few times this week on trade possibilities. There's one that lines up, but I'm trying to figure out if it's a good trade. I mean, I haven't offered it yet, or even if it's fair value. But Battlestar Galactica for I'm kind of interested in merchants and marauders and this and the expansion, and I'm trying to get a price history, and it looks like those two. BSG, it feels like it's really just skyrocketed in value. Oh, it is. So, yeah, BSG's gone crazy. They're, they're, it's out of print. And they lost the license. I went and sold mine because I hadn't played it since my buddies mastered it and jacked yeah. it up, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun, but you got to have the crew and all. So I don't think it's practical for me anymore. But yeah, it's a, a part of me just wants to see if I can sell it on one of the forums and see if it can pull that money and then try to just buy them. But Anyways, I don't know if it'd be a good trade for those two or not. I mean, if it's a value-wise, I don't want to. I get annoyed by those guys that, you know, send you, hey, I'd like to trade you my little pocket ogre reprint for your Battle of the Dinosaurs game or something. Yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> you know, Put it on eBay. I always answer. I'm like, ah, thanks. No, thanks. You know. Put it on eBay. I think mine went for 250 bucks. Woo! Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Wow, and I was, 100, I was thinking 100. I was thinking 100 I'd be happy with, but okay. 
Yeah, I mean, and if you've got the uh, the two or three expansions, two expansions, they go for no. like stupid money. I mean, it's way wow. more. Yeah, because it's not coming back. They lost the license. It was uh, it was Fantasy Flight, and uh, you know, I loved that game and played it a lot until I played it with my buddies that have played it like 180 times, and I'm not lying. And yeah, my buddy I was with you that one. You and me both said that was sucked. <laughs> room, yeah, he came out on the first turn. I'm a Cylon. Here's the deal, and I'm doing this. I'm like, whoa, no hiddenness here. And he's like, nope, not optimal. I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah, it's not yeah. fun either. That game has really boring mechanics without the guesswork. Yeah, and uh, they played it so much. He knew with that character, he had to come out right away and get the special power working. And and it was a terrible game after that. And they would call me repeatedly, come play. I'm like, nope, dead to me. Game is dead to me. So then when it came up, I mean, I hadn't even thought about selling it. It was just sitting somewhere, and I, I was seeing that it was out of print. I said, well, mine's open and well played, but I'll throw it up there, and boom, 250 So Wow. Yeah, yeah, go take a look. Man, if you hold it for another year, it'll probably go up even higher than that. I mean, people are well, I'm in, Yeah, I'm in no hurry. I got plenty of unplayed games to work through. There you go. So Michael Reeling here, five status pro baseball, four status pro football, three up front, two breakout Normandy, one flat top. Actually, a nice. I never played flat top. Have you? I have not. That one I don't have. I think he. I think he uses hidden. So that's part of what scared me off. I heard it's real complex. There's one right above it. John Mack, Mc, Merchants of Venus, Kremlin, Attack Sub, Richtofen's War, Kingmaker. I'll look at that. Yeah. See, when they don't use the numbers, I might breeze by. I like when I like the format. Just letting you know. Oh, Enrique Romero. He's got the format down. First, personally, this is my. This is his top five. Five advanced civilization. Four squad leader. Three wooden ships and iron men. Great guy. I like Enrique. What? I like him even more. Number two is B seventeen Queen of the Skies, and then one is. Blackbeard, and he throws in the arg. Arg. So uh, I, th I think I can play with Enrique. Enrique and I would be game buddies guaranteed. Kind of like uh, Quintilius Varius here, or Varus. He loves ham tag light. Way to go, buddy. Oops, you skipped JD and even put him in numbers for you. Now, see, I'm just I'll now. Read. I didn't skip JD. I just read the other one above it. I've got to come down and open up JD like this. See? I there you skip. go. He wasn't skipped. So awesome, as always. Thank you. And then he's, his list is five ASL, four Richtofen's War, three Kingmaker, two Wooden Ships and Iron Men. Great game. One Advanced, Third Reich, and he likes the other version, which is the Pacific Empire of the Rising Sun. And I hear tell you could combine those together and play the entire war if you want. Woo. Yeah. I don't know if anybody ever actually does that. I don't know. The Empire, of the, Rising, the Empire of the Rising Sun went for a lot, a lot of money. They even had an advanced Third Reich Deluxe, I thought, or something, didn't they? Or was it? Yeah, that? it's been reprinted. Um, I forget who did it, but yeah, that's been out. Yeah, that's been reprinted since then. Mm. Mm -mm. So let's see. Um, uh, Gramers, he just loves Starship Troopers. He likes that. And he talks about the book a little bit, how it's underrated and misrepresented. Um, we've got a list that is, is weird. It's inside a sentence, but I know it's, it references Judd. So John Dantes says, hey, Judd, yeah. did you find time to revisit Combat Commander already? Nah, probably won't be visited for over a year or so. I've got a I've got a long list of games I'm working through. Getting ready to start in August, I get one day off every week for vacation, plus my Christmas, Thanksgiving stuff. Ooh, because called furlough. Huh? Is that a furlough? No, I've got. I've been in my company so long, I've got a ton of vacation. Ooh, all right. Didn't do our national park trips this year, so I got a bunch of it built up. So, yeah, I, I call them more game Mondays. Basically, get the house to yourself and read the rules the week before and have at it. It's a great way to learn new games. Good call. So he was curious on your impressions. Obviously, you haven't been back to it, so no change there. There's something about this game 
uh, what he had was, it was interesting. He's bought it, sold it. Two, bought it, sold it. Three, bought it, I'll say kept it. And uh, so he's bought it three different times before he finally held on to it. So, all right, let's see. We're not going to read through, uh, you know, Douglas has great stuff, and I think he's got a list further down. He may have put a list somewhere else, too. But I'm not Oops, I think he passed, uh, uh, I think it's Uwe is how you say that. But. Well, I'm on to uh, Brian Jarvis. I'm on to Brian Jarvis. Yeah, go up two. Go up two. You're killing me, Chad. You're killing me. Uwe Beck. No, I'll well, read it if you need it. Well, I love Uwe Beck, but I, I think you're missing what I'm reading because I'm not too Uwe Beck yet. So, it's because Uwe, I bet you, is down further. But we'll see. We can come back to it if necessary. I'm going to keep things flowing with Brian Jarvis. Brian Jarvis is five, Fortress Europa, four, Battle of the Bulge, 65, because it was also his first war game, three, Russian campaign, two, Storm over Arnhem, one, up front up front. Curiosus came in and commented. Well, let's see. Uh, Airman just mentioned that uh, no mention of the uh, monster the longest day. I said I own it, but I haven't played it. Have you ever played it? No, I mentioned that it was at that store at Central and Rock, and I had it in my hands and did it. And I said I probably would have never played it. It was too big for my britches. So Edwin says submarines is number one pick. I don't see Uva's deal. If you've got it up, go ahead. Okay. And read it if you find Brian Jarvis where he was reading that, it's two above it. Douglas Peterson was right above. Then Uva is right above that. If you've got it, go ahead and read it. Okay. Right? I did not. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm going off of an NBA player who had the same spelling. Uva um, is correct. Okay. Um, Starship Troopers, Panzer Blitz, Panzer Leader up front, and Squad Leader. I really thought I would have seen up front on most people's list. That's kind of surprised me. I'm not seeing it more. That was my pick for what I thought would make the most list. Hmm. I don't know if I had a thought of, I didn't think it would be, what did I think? Did I even, we should do that. We should make a prediction. That should be a good starter. So team on five wooden ships, iron man. We can see that a lot. Hands blitz battle of the bulge, 1914. Very nice. His number one is a Alicia, a unique yep. game. Yeah, for a most unusual unusual historical siege. Yeah, Greg put that in a list or two, and I got really interested and bought it, and now I'm trying to figure out a way to solo it because it uses a certain amount of hidden information. But the game's been out so long, I would have thought somebody would have come up with something by now. Hmm. Oh, I think you did pick a game, and I think you picked Storm over Arnhem for what you thought would be on the most list. Okay. We will go with your memory. I believe it's better than mine. E4 Airman, top five. I have one help. Number one, 1914, two, 1776, three, B-17. Advanced Civ was his fourth, and Gettysburg his fifth. Of course, I You know, I wonder, okay, there was a Gettysburg that was out in like 62. Really, really old school, Charles S. Roberts looking. Might have even designed it. But then there was one that came yeah, out. He did, I believe. For the 125th anniversary. Do you remember that one? I do believe so, and I was just reading Shaw's book, and I think they had somebody rework it. Yeah, and I was wondering if it was the same game, if it was redone, different name, or I used to have that one, and it was in a weird box because it wasn't the fl it was wasn't the flat box that we're used to, and it wasn't the bookcase box. It was like some weird hybrid. It was an interesting like starter game for you know teach somebody war gaming. Yeah, I was just reading the deal where um, I yeah uh, shoot. I should have made notes on it. But, uh, yeah, I think Charles uh, designed the first one. It didn't necessarily take in a lot. It was more game. It didn't have a lot of factual tie-in. And then it was reworked by somebody and re-released Okay, with them. So Bill Atterbury, um, but, 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 uh, he's got honorable mention first. Then we go into five, Luftwaffe, four Origins, three Longest Day. Two Third Reich and one Russian campaign. I can't remember if I played Luftwaffe or Air Force. Buddy of mine had both of them. Well, and Air Force had that multicolored rainbow looking half circle thing that I couldn't quite figure out what it was doing. I don't remember because, man, we're talking like 1984, 85. I remember 
I remember having a battle like a P51 against a 109 or something, and we we messed around with that. So I'm thinking it was Luftwaffe, but at the same time, we were borrowing a copy and reading Air Force, but reading the rules a little bit. See, I remember Luftwaffe being more of like uh, air groups flying into Germany and then Germany defending. So I don't remember it being mano a mano. I think that's air. Okay, Force. I could be wrong. Okay, Greg. Of course, Greg Schmitkin's here. Is uh, number five is Magic Realm, which I think a lot of people were surprised to see that on there. Four is Merchants of Venus. Three is Atlantic Storm. Love that. He taught that to me, and we played it many a time. Two, We the People, and then one up front. And he said this is mostly based on how often he's played them. So it's not necessarily a ranking of favorite, more on how often. And that is interesting that he's played up front the most often. And I think he's obviously put ASL into his Hall of Fame is what I would guess. Okay. I was like, I can't imagine him playing any game more than ASL. And I thought, well, maybe he has the MMP copy, but I figured he'd have the AS, I mean, the Avalon Hill, but, or maybe both. Who knows? Yes. I'm sure he put that into his, uh, into his, uh, his Hall of Fame. Because I'm with you, I think that would be his number one. So then Greg comes in at the bottom. Now, I've said it before, but my copy has been used so much, it's like shuffling jellyfish. Uh, what's he talking about? Is he talking about Atlantic Storm? Probably up front, I guess. Oh, I bet you're right. I bet you're right. Yeah. You he go. riffle shuffles him, and he does not sleep. You'd, you'd, you'd be down with him. <laughs> yeah. It's a game. You know, it's a game. I, I, don't, I don't sleeve. The plastic gets in my way. They stick together sometimes. They static cling. Anything that static clings, I don't want to play with. Unless it's going on a map, maybe. One of those static cling maps. All right, we're going to breeze through this. There's a lot of topics back and forth, going back and forth. And now it's reloading. See, this is where it's weird. But there's Uba. See, Uba Beck's down here for me. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were going right down. Well, it says on my deal he put it in eight minutes ago, so I don't know. Maybe it maybe it popped into your screen or something. Um, wow, that was yeah, one. I I um, let's see, Bill uh, Simone Gladiator was his first Avalon Hill game. Still has it. He used to pull it out and play it with his son. I wanted to reference that just because any games you can get out that is a perfect one to play with your son. Um, you put in your movement. You're kind of blindly moving around each other. It works okay. There's, in my opinion, Trunzo's new uh, Gladiator game is much better. Uh, this one feels like you're more like uh, juggernauts that are kind of moving and you're not able to play off of each other's movements as much. It's predictive movement. Um, let's see. The Kessler Foundation. Only played a few Avalon Hill games. Five Twixt. My wife hates that game. For Go, well, there you go. They did bring Go in, so of course the uh, ancient Chinese game. Three Dune to acquire. Got a buddy at work. His family, whenever they reunion, all of his uncles and his dad play acquire constantly. They played it as a kid. Five Iron One Diplomacy, and then he's sure that Rail Barons or Starship Troopers will make the list. Yeah. Oh, sorry, man. Oh, where are you I, going? I ate. That game. Well, diplomacy. I don't, or it, I don't even speak its name. I hate that game so much. Oh, I it's thought the you only were game I ever by aliens or something. I thought you was like no. A, like, I. That's the only which, game I ever gave a one rating to. Which game? If I, diplomacy. Oh, man. you just said it. You said it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll be haunted now. Uh, man, that I hate that game so much that other games I hate, I give it a 1.1 rating and I don't do fractions, but I just wanted to <laughs> make it known that it is more evil than, and I always put a comment. It could be worse. It could be diplomacy, man. Um, I hate that game. Anyways. And you hate it, wow. You hate it don't get me started. You. Just go read my BGG comment on it. I, oh. it's my, my long soliloquy of why I hate that game. And no, I didn't lose any friends over it. Oh, well, it's cause you got to lie. You got to lie. If you're going to play Oh, um, man. 
I wow, do I? Kissinger. But I know a lot of people love it, including Henry Kissinger. But yeah, I was going to say I heard Kissinger and um, oh, what's his name? The young guy that was always trying to like gamify Vietnam. Um, oh, McNamara. Yeah, I heard him and uh, Kissinger and McNamara used to play it all the time. I don't know. That's who knows if that's true or not. Um, let me pop up one because I can't read it. Phil Hatfield. Uh, five, We the People. Four, Emergence of Venus. Three, Great Campaigns of the American Civil War. And yeah, he cheated on this one because he's got them all in there. Uh, two, it's like you in the morgue. <laughs> right. Main Battle Tank and One, Civilization Advanced slash Advanced Civ. I, well, I thought them. MBT was a GMT thing. I didn't realize that was an Avalon oh, Hill. Was, yeah, it was reprinted, but it was originally Avalon Hill. Uh, it's the whole Russian, American, German. GMT did a great job. They got Canadian forces in there, British forces, German. You could get all kinds of modules for that. And it felt a little more retro. I reviewed it. Um, I think the retroness didn't play as well for me personally. It was nice, but it, it definitely felt 80s ish, which isn't bad. It's just there's so many better ways to do things now, in my opinion. So, ERMJ, source, oh, I'll we'll go for status pro, five, four, status pro, basketball, football, basketball, baseball, all status pro. Two, Dune, the ultimate, and one, Source of the Nile. See, this is why I started looking up Source of the Nile. And it's like an adventure. It's like a, an adventure exploration game, and it has me intrigued. I tried to I get a he, Huh? I bet if you snoop around his profile long enough, he's wrote a, um, re, a after action. He has really cool after action reports. I don't know if he still has that big geek list or not, but. Yeah, he does really, really big stuff like that. So I bet if you snoop around and he still has it out there, you could probably find something on it. Yeah. Dude's one that's always interested me. Man, and we used to go for an arm and a leg, and then if I got it, I'd still I'd have to read the book. Or even mm -hmm. for that matter, watch the movie with King and I mean Sting and Captain Picard. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you uh they did like uh some guy did a re edit of that and uh, it was on YouTube and it was much more understandable. They're supposed to be I uh, they they they're ready to release a new Dune movie now, if I understand right. Um, I think it was a movie. It'd be better as some kind of HBO series, I think. But whatever. Robert Moffat, and uh, he has Blitzkrieg, Air Force, Dauntless Four, Three, B Seventeen, Queen of the Skies, Two, Gettysburg, Eighty Eight. That's the one I was talking about. One hundred twenty fifth. There you go. And one victory in. The Pacific is his number one. Very interesting. I think, did a victory in the Pacific get reprinted here? Mm, you know what? There's so many things. We're in such a golden time. I, yeah. I, I would agree with you. I Rick thought Gidoo. it was, but I can not remember. Rick Godot. I just start, I like saying the name Godot. Five, Britannia. Four, For the People. Three, B-17. B-17 right in the middle of a lot. People's list. Two, here come the rebels. That's the Maryland campaign in the great campaigns of the American Civil War. And one, Hannibal. And Judd will like this. I respect it like Judd respects we the people. So <laughs> that was a nice little, and that it says it all right there. All right, let's see. We've got Panzer Blitz in there. We're going to keep rolling down. We're nearing the end. We've got uh, Hater Zenith. Interesting. Hater Zenith. I'm not sure I'm saying it right. Not not numerically listed, which I prefer. Five, four, three, two, one. If you ever do this, but longest day, Africa Core, Third Reich, Russian campaign, victory in the Pacific. And then he does have his honorable mentions of Flat Top and Platoon was issued by another publisher, but he snuck it in there. Snuck it in there. But then uh, DWBG Gamers says Platoon was issued by Avalon Hill. And I don't really, I vaguely remember it had that, the same poster of Platoon on the box, but I couldn't remember who published it. Do you remember it? No. So I'm going to go with DWBG Gamer or B Gamer saying that it was Avalon Hill, but I can't remember independently. Now, I thought I already had ERMJ's list in here. He had non-war game and war game. This is his uh, war games. 
see that threw me that threw me but we'll go with this so this is his er bickford uh, five empires in arms third reich for russian campaign uh history of the world is number two in conquistador which was a uh a, a berg game i believe wasn't it I, i'm not familiar with that one i think it was i would have to look i don't think i don't know i get confused because there was there was another one that always confused me. Okay. what what oh it's next uh, one was, well sergeant steiner he was replying underneath that same thread so i didn't want to skip him i remember this was in here no particular order though squad leader panzer leader breakout normandy battle of the bulge 81 and hannibal rome versus carthage they now have the phalanx one on the reverse map has uh, Hannah Hannah Carr or what yeah, is it? Has like Dribble, I think, or or Hamel Carr. Sorry, Hamel Carr. Hamel Carr is yeah. on the back side. Too many H guys over there, but yeah, Hannibal's dad. Um, yeah, first Punic War, and then I guess um, Semenich has taken that system to the Gallic Wars with GMT. Hmm. But Real? I never got the. Now back in the day, they were talking about that um, Hamilcar ex expansion back when Valley Games had Hannibal, and then you know oh. their whole fiasco. Sorry Lord, to bring that up. But, yeah, terrible. But, cover yeah, then it went to that combined, and I didn't want to re get purchase the game because my Valley Games, it's a good looking game, and happy with it. And then I talked about doing a vassal module form for a game, but they said yeah. Then they never wrote me so. Fizzled. I always wondered how that Hamel car expansion was. You know, I didn't want to get too invested just for that because I already have hands in the sea, and you know, yeah. I have another Punic, first Punic War game, so I didn't know if it was that good or you know, stick with Hannibal thing. I've got the Evelyn Hill version, but I think I'm going to let her go and hold on to this Phalanx one. It's beautiful. Okay. I haven't, I haven't played it yet, but I like that I can play both, and it's got a very nice production level. I still love the box from Avalon Hill though. You know, I have the um, the little miniature guys from yeah. the Valley Games. If yeah. anybody wants them, shoot me a note. You pay postage, it's yours. Wow. I don't use them. So um, one of them might even be broken. I don't know. Somebody gave them to me, and I don't use them. I'm happy with the stands. Oh, so I anybody wants them there, that's the way to get the message out. Pay thought postage. You, <laughs> so. I thought you were going to say you flipped the table and broke one of them. No, no, no. I know, I'm just teasing. Forrest Cole. I've been five. halfway across the country, so. Five. five. Forrest Cole here has uh, Arab Israeli Wars. There you go. You know that one. The Russian campaign. Three Titan. I need to play Titan. I hear a lot of good stuff about it. Uh, two, Caesar, Caesar at Elysia. Um, and one, 1776. He even had his honorable mentions parked right where we do between two and one. And it was finally. Well, I took a hard look at that Frederick the Great game because I'm always yeah. looking for Austrian secession war games. Well, there you go. Frederick the Great, Machiavelli, which I hear is like somebody, I think, told me it's uh, diplomacy and during the Renaissance or something. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm probably way off. One point of time, Stellar Conquest. Stellar Conquest. I don't know. I'm probably wrong on the Machiavelli. Who knows? Um, he also oh, his number, wait, his number one was right below it, 1776. That's when, aha, because when it. I saw his name, all I could see was 5432. And I was like, well, sure, oh, this dude's got I, I, I came back to his honorable mention. I should have done it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, he's a hardcore American Revolution gamer, so I figured when I saw his name, he'd have that in there. So he also, went, uh, yes, he loved, loved the general. So let's see, uh, Kevin Beer, he loved 1776. I think I'm at the bottom here. Yes, I am. Yep. So we're going, we're going to, I'm going to come off of here and stop the share. And then I've got to get myself back over here and bring us in full screen. All right. Man, I missed all the comments because I had my other screen yep. covered. It, same, so. same thing happens to me. I need to get a second screen and hook them in so I can see the comments. But I get... Uh, I get uh, it's hard enough for me to work through. That was a great list. A lot of folks added some stuff in. Let me look back here. So Uva Beck, if you don't like lying, don't play Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, 
I don't mind the line portion. It was the fact that I played with some buddies of mine that had played it, and I'm not kidding, probably a hundred times. And uh, Judd actually was over at my house. I had him all over there. And on, on the very first turn of one of our guys, he was a silo. He, he revealed himself, started doing his little act of little uh, sabotage. Yeah, whatever it was. And I'm like, what are you doing? Because the whole game, the fun is that sorting out the, the trader. And he goes, it's not the optimal move with this silo. And you want to come out early because you can do the most damage. And I was like, ugh. And it was a brutal three hours. Because yeah, there was no injury. There was no injury. Yeah, it was just mechanics. It was terrible. And the game doesn't have good mechanics. They're very repetitive and dull. It's all about trying to figure out. And the funny thing is, you don't even have to lie in that game to be good at it. One that time I played in, um, I, is it Casey? Was that his name? Yep. Casey was yeah. the one that was. Uh, he sat on one side of him, I sat on the other. And Casey and I were the Cylons. And somehow that guy wrestled the admiralship and the presidency away. Cylon base stars pop, start pop, popping up all around us. I'm Starbuck. He has all these decisions to nuke him, do all the stuff, and he throws me in the brig and says, I think you're a Cylon. And I'm like thinking, well, I am, and thank you. But I'm sitting there looking at him going, dude, seriously? <laughs> well, and, and he played dumb so well. But at the funny – what I I missed around, there's like a solitaire variant of that game. It sucks, but it teaches you the mechanics really well. I did it enough where I saw optimal moves not reveal Cylons, but how to handle different events that come up and crises. And when people would go along, one of the dumb Cylon screw ups is, I think we should do this. And it's so ignorant. It's like, really dude. Okay. Cylon. I would listen to him and I always had a better one in my mind. And I'm like, yeah, there's a better move, but I'm not going to share it. And I was like, I'd kind of go along with the crowd. Yeah, I agree. That is a good move. Thinking all along mm -hmm. there's better moves. And I was like, you don't even have to lie. You just don't have to offer up anything. So go. Yeah, but then it got Sorry. ruined. Yeah, and but if you get I'm a good kidding. group who doesn't ruin it, it's it could be a lot of fun. But man, you got to get five people. Oh, thing about diplomacy, yeah. I need to explain part of my mad hatred for that game. When Ooh. I was a kid, um, uh, ninth, like eighth grade. I'm not old. Ninth grade. I'm not old enough to drive yet. So. And I was from oh, a small oh, town. Oh, in Kansas. Oh, you weren't driving when it was illegal. Oh, oh yeah, I, yeah. I mean. I was I could have I could have drive to Kansas City by myself. I wasn't that age yet. I could drive to work in school. <laughs> I had achieved freedom. Um, now nah, the um, anyways. So I was from a small town in Kansas, and most of the stuff there was fantasy based because you know, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is all the rage. Few Steve Jackson games. Few Avalon Hill. I could roll over to Joplin, Missouri, and get some stuff. But the two really great ones, there's one in Wichita, and we barely went to Wichita ever. Um, um, and then Kansas City, we'd always go to like once a year. And they had one over on 103 in Medcalf, if you know that area, which has since moved. But uh, anyways, that was my big thing, getting to go up there, and it was a treasure trove. And I had went through and done all my studying and decided I was going to get Hell's Highway by Victory Games. And I had planned and planned and planned. I have the game in my hand. I walk by. I see diplomacy. I start looking it over. It looks easy. I hate to read rules. Oh, World War One. blah, 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 blah. No dice. Hey, that's an interesting concept. Well, you know, Henry Kissinger loves I don't even know what's said on the box. And I put it back. You Hell's Highway. And I got that game. So that is part of my mad hatred because we got this thing and it was the worst game I had ever played with a combat system. So ridiculous. Um, you know, so anyways, that's what added the regret of screwing up and I did not get hell's highway. This, that was like 1984. I didn't get hell's highway until 2011 in a trade. Wow. And, um, you like hell's highway now. yeah, yeah, it's good. I mean, victory games, they, they didn't hardly turn anything out that went fabulous. But um, anyway, that's part of it. It was just the regret of, man, not only did I trade a game I had been planning for, and right. that's why I learned uh, why you don't do, you know, it's one of those things you learn Impulse. in life. Impulse. Impulse buys are not always good. They're generally bad. Yeah, so, um, wow. So there was just a, it's the same amount of hatred I have for that game. And then I <laughs> traded it for Squad Leader. Then I felt like the movie The Ring, where I'm, you know, you got to pass the pass it around to other people and give them the curse to save yourself. 
it was, but, it was wow. Like, it was like your Christmas holiday fruitcake. Yeah, you just, there you go. You just kept so, sending diplomacy forward. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's. So, anyways, you, that game, I have a I have a crazy hatred for it. All right, Even well, worse yeah. than Agricola. And Agricola ruined ruined Euro games for me. I used to be your Agamer until I played that thing. Oh yeah, Agricola's terrible. We got to go to Trevor. Well, for me, I did not like Agricola. All right, Trevor Just, hold the phone. What is that huge Spock poster behind Judd? Is there a Spock poster oh, back there? <laughs> yeah, sweet. Pop it open. Yep. Hold on. See, this is what he means. Pop it open. There. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, my daughter, she loves Spock. And, you know, we went through the Star Trek, and she wanted that yeah. for her room. Yeah. Now she's yeah. two daughters now. That was two. That was like four years ago, five years ago, and now she's getting the age. And she still likes Spock, but she wants other things on her limited wall space. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I was like, well, shoot, I'll, I'll take him. I'll put it, I'll find a home for him down here. You did. So, which daughter? Huh? Which daughter, or do you not want to say? Oh, my oldest one, Sarah, the one, the one in the Mark Herman video. Got it. Got it. Yeah, she cannot stand Quinto, Zachary Quinto Spock. She doesn't like him. He has way too emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard, Leonard, she, did actually, do, she calls me. This is what's funny. She calls him a hippie. <laughs> wow, Leonard did do a great job of. I mean, you would get just a just a a like subtle hint of emotion that he would quickly cover up, and it was enough that it was. I mean, you're right on that. Nimoy played yeah. it perfectly. Well, I don't blame Keto. He knows J.J. Abrams. I mean, look at what he did to Star Wars. Um, uh, I know one but, uh, of my buddies who hated Star Trek was like, I like these new ones. I go, oh my God, that's the problem. That's yeah. the problem. They're actually. Yeah, Quinto's a good actor. I saw a movie in him where he was like a Wall Street guy, and they were. it had to do with the 2008 crisis and him stumbling yeah. onto it. But he did a great job. Good actor. It's just, man, right. and he oh, got the part the one where, to him. Isn't that the one where uh, the actor, I'm forgetting his name, he's always blaring like death metal and uh, everybody, it's, uh, isn't that the movie where where he figures out how to short everything? It's called The Big Short, isn't it? No, no, no. It's a, this is more of a real, real history of how they figured it out. I forget which I Bear Stearns or whichever one of those guys figured out. I that the, the Big Short is too. Oh, um, but you know, yeah, they go. Anyways, how, how that whole thing tumbled and they're getting all these guys to sell stuff, you know, dump off all their stuff, knowing that they're basically going to be out of a job as soon as it's done. It was, it was an interesting movie. But, yeah, mm -hmm. um, Ito, it's like Hayden Christensen. A lot of people don't realize he's not he's a pretty good actor. He did Star Wars the way George Lucas told him to. He kept trying to do it differently, and Lucas kept steering him in that direction where he gave that horrible performance. And the poor kid's been, you know, hammered for it. And, Finally, after he got from under that shadow, he and Natalie Portman, people figured out, yeah, they're pretty good actors, but he'll always be cursed by being Anakin Skywalker. But anyway, <laughs> Lucas, great idea guy, but really ought to hand the reins off to somebody else and his and the script as well for polish it up for the dialogue. I hate sand. Well, I agree. I, I would agree. I, I agree with you on that. I love the idea of what they did with uh, Mandalorian and the volume. Have you watched the behind the scenes stuff, the gallery yet? You need to do that. You need to watch the gallery because the guy that does their uh, sound, um, he's the future. He's like a young 25 something guy that just is like a, a savant. And then uh, the use of the volume is all the, uh, the uh, LED screens that make the set. So instead of using a green screen that the actors have to fake, they can literally, it's like they're in it. And it's all based on the, uh, I think the Unreal Game Engine using the camera as the first person like shooter version. Well, oh, I'm making my mo motions and it's on you. I was going my first yeah. person shooter deal. So I like guard, uh, party on dude. Party on. Uh, let's see, hey, what do we have? Hour, um, Trevor, Trevor won the run the contest because I I screwed up. I told Bart I screwed this up and didn't do it last week. You might call this ham tag like I call this your grave. Ah, curse your sudden and inevitable. What is it? Uh, so I remember the line: sudden inevitable turn. Ah, I forget the word. 
from ah. Firefly. <laughs> betrayal, sudden and inevitable betrayal. Very nice. Very nice. All right, let's see. Bill Harrison says the store was called Kong's King, Crown. King's Crown. He corrects it in the next one. Oh, sorry. King's Crown. I thought Kong was. Yeah, they, last I knew they moved to 95th in Quivera, I think. Um, anyways, people know Kansas City better than I do. Here's the funny part. If I go to Kansas City and I want to go to that store, I have to get Google Maps. I've been to Kansas City a zillion times. Send me in New York City. I can tell you exactly how to get to their their game store using the subway system by memory. <laughs> uh oh, Vorpal was not happy that he was cut out of the conversation. We've been shut out of the conversation, so I'm checking out early. Until next time, God bless, friends. Well, that's not the intent, but I will say when we're reading off the screen share, um, at least with my setup, I cannot see the comments. So, but what I've noticed, which is great, the uh, folks that come on are kind of commenting among themselves. Matter of fact, sometimes I feel like I'm intruding on the conversation because it'll be Trevor talking to Uva or something like that. But uh, sorry to Vorpal Bite. Um, but yeah, when I'm screen sharing, um, I cannot see the comments. So maybe I'll have to set up a second screen so I can. But to be quite honest, watching the comments, the screen share, um, it can be fairly disjointed. If I had somebody like running my IT screen and, and clicking on comments, that would be helpful. But we don't have that here at the, at the brunching household. So um, let's see, Matt, I liked Casey Joe's, formerly Smokey Joe's, and Casey K., Ate at the original gas station location. And then Airman, E4. It's good. Happy he knows what he's talking about. There you go. Happy Kansas birthday. City folks, another barbecue. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Is that a barbecue t shirt on Judd? Yes. So uh, thanks to E4 Airman. Yes, I will be the Grand 50 in just three days, which is pretty cool. I had this plan that we had set up in January pre COVID where we were going to have a huge weekend. So my birthday will be on a Tuesday, excuse me, but we were going to have a huge weekend board game event at the house. Upstairs, downstairs, 50 people coming in. Of course, Jed would be invited, your family. And we were. I was going to have some game guys I know that would be teaching specific games. It was going to be an all-day thing, maybe even going into the night. There was a guy who's, I can't remember who he's a, I think he's a designer. But he said his grandmother uh, used to have a, uh, for her birthday, she would do a board game event that would start in the afternoon. They would game all night. Um, and then in the morning, anybody that had stayed, she would take out the IHOP and buy breakfast for. Her. Now, I don't know if I was going to go to the breakfast side. But one thing she did that was really cool, she had Monopoly money. And I'd actually picked up some, like, fake money. And she would go around, and if uh, Judd had a, a great come from behind, she would throw down $20 Monopoly money or something. And then if, uh, you know, if uh, Uva was a great sport, even though he got trounced, you know, he stayed in the game and he kept her going, boom, he gets, a, he gets a 30. And she had all this stuff, and then at the end of the night, around midnight, I think it was, she would have like 10 or something of her games, and she would have an auction that would go for – the games using the monopoly money so then she was able to give away games and i'd had this big plan to do that now we're saying that maybe once a vaccine comes out or everybody gets enough of this thing that, that there's enough folks that break the cycle but uh, i actually had a buddy of mine who's a nurse that got it gave it to his wife gave it to his living mother-in-law she had the least effects of it his wife had the worst his two kids, I think 10 and 7, zero effects whatsoever. And he was put on quarantine, and they tried to separate the, the mom and the wife, but they all the adults got it. And uh, he's since been cleared now. He's good to go. He said his wife had it the worst. She did not feel good at all. But uh, he's free and clear now. So, But uh, that was interesting. But, yeah, his kids literally living in the quarantine – Nary a symptom. So, hmm. Enrique uh, asks, "What's for next Saturday?" That's a good point. And uh, so we've got a couple options here, Judd. I did look at my 
I want to go with a victory theme. So we could either do victory games or we could do victory point games, which I'm pretty thin on. But I do have some here that I that I like. And uh, I can come up with a victory point to grab a new one, and then you can go back to old with victory. That was kind of my that. thought. That was kind of my thought. It's a little confusing with the names, but let's do the victory point games. Um, and I don't, I've got a feeling that if I, I've not, I saw Zulu Warriors played once. <laughs> And I was at a con, and I asked them because they were giving me a couple sample games to go do reviews on. I think um, – oh, I can't remember which ones they gave me at the time. But I'd asked for the Zulu one, and they're like, no, nah, that one sells pretty good. And I was like, oh, ah. And then, sure enough, all this other stuff happens. I should have bought it. Right yeah, I'll tell you what. If you wanted to lay it a few weeks when you swing by, you can grab some and try them out. They're easy games to learn. But um. No, let's just move forward. Okay. I am actually off. Um, I had to burn some time, too, so I'm taking a week <laughs> off. I got to do a bunch of yard work, and I figured I would coordinate it around my 50th. But uh, I've got to catch up on some video reviews. of. I still got 1805 Austerlitz on the table, and I need to get that played and then filmed. That's from, uh, that's from Trafalgar Games. I need to get my review up on that. But... Uh, so I probably don't have time to work that in. But I love it. So let's do that. We'll do victory point games. That will be our deal. My list is a little thin on that, but I've got five. I kind of look. Um, I've got more than five, but I've got a list of five. So that I can. Uh, Trevor had a good comment. Yeah, anybody that knows me at all on BGG can nail down easily my number one victory point game. But, yeah, when he said four, I said four. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got it. So. so that is what we'll do. And that's a little more obscure. And sadly, they they're no longer around, but it's worth getting out there. Hey, you know, they they do have a thing though. That if you go out there, they got bought by somebody. Yeah. And I told you they that guy was interested more in the IPs of um uh, Zed's and Nemo's War and um I forget the name of the third one. Yeah. Wasn't but, it the necessary um, – oh, shoot. Go ahead. Um, yeah, the cruelty, the the crap. Yep. Um, I know. That's that's excellent. It's over there. Oh, let's see. Cruel necessity. It may or may not be on my list. Yeah. The um, Now, the thing is, if you go out there, I was really surprised to see that they are going to reprint – a lot more of those than I stuff I wouldn't think they would go for because I thought ah eh, the war game they won't go for that to not sell enough. They're actually got like eight games they're doing. You know I would expect Circus Train because it's a Euro, but uh, and I think it was on there. And I think Zulus and Empires in America is going to decision. I could be wrong on that. I, I almost want to say one of those is on the VPG list, but. Uh, Miranda, Joseph Miranda, who designed those, he does a lot of stuff with decisions. So I think it's moving there. But I was real surprised to see some stuff on there that I didn't expect to see. That there's still so there's a chance you can get stuff. And like I said, people have been moving stuff around. So Worthington seems to be pretty smart in picking up a few of those. And I know Steve Carey was shopping around his too. I he's off of BGG now, so I don't I can't I ain't got to talk to him to see how things have been going. So, but yeah, I there's. Never, I never played hmm. Nemo's War. I would have liked it. Oh, you'd love it. It's good. So I thought Zulu. Yeah, was Zulu. Good. I think that was it. It kind of shocked me because I assumed it was going to decision. Got it. Yeah, that's the one I would want. I think. Um, <laughs> but I haven't played. Then Trevor's next comment about high treason. Um, I met the designer. I played um, the Sword of Rome. So uh, he was big group with him. And he is a Colorado lawyer. And Bart, he's. I told him, you're the only guy I've ever met that has better work stories than Bart. Because <laughs> you know what legislation happened out in Colorado? <laughs> THC, baby. THC is legal. Oh, my. Well, it's not completely legal. So there's some funny stories. 
Okay, I guess I don't know uh, all the finer I mean, of Colorado law. There, there quanti there's quant quantity limits and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, yeah, he had some funny, funny stories. I'm like, dude, <laughs> not, not breaking attorney client privileges, just in generalities. And it was like, yeah, it was. But yeah, he's a cool guy. That's cool. <laughs> I but do yeah, that was funny. Because yeah, your work stories are way better than me. I'm like, well, I've made a cool computer spreadsheet today, you know. Well, I do know that they, there was a game company out there, and they had a warehouse where they were storing their games, and their lease came up. And I can't remember which company it was. Their lease came due, and they the the owner of the warehouse asked them for ten times the rent, and they were like, what? No, we can't do 10 times the rent for warehouse storage. And they said, well, we've got a hydroponic grow thing that wants to pay us that much money. Can you, but we'll keep it with you if you can pay the increase. And they're like, no, we can't pay the increase. So, and uh, yeah, apparently warehouse space is like, gone through the roof. I don't know if it was hydroponic grow or if they were just storing it there. That seems like that would be a dicey thing to store, but who knows? Dicey, no pun intended. Uh, here's a question. What happened to Judd's crazy Russian coworker? You know what? That, yeah, came, to mind. that yeah. came to mind. Yeah, funny. Yeah, he's not crazy. He's just funny. Because that was yeah, he's still, you Russian. He's still there. I haven't seen much anybody since this whole COVID. When I get in, I get in my office, I close the door, I don't come out. Yeah, so. Judd doesn't even hang around me. So, of course, I'm I'm getting exposed to everything. I'm out. In the That's what I'm thinking, man. Anybody got it? It's you, dude. But yeah. Oh, I know. But or well, it's kind of like though. I noticed right off the bat, I I'm good friends with one of the guys that's on our homeless outreach team, and they try to get these guys into both to get on back on their meds or to get into some housing. And I said, man, how come they're not getting sick? He goes, those guys got the best. Uh, immune systems that have made you know you could imagine i mean they're, yeah. they're they don't they don't get nothing and i was like huh um but uh yeah yeah i don't know so uh, we've we finally had three of my co-workers of course we have 720 on the force that have gotten it but uh i think one guy cut hair on the side and they think that's where he got it <laughs> i was like what so but uh, man, yeah, I've been in some weird areas, but uh, I don't know. I'm also O, o negative blood, baby, and it's supposed to be, I don't know, o, o positive negative, apparently, or greater resistance. Have you heard this? I don't know all the details. No, but that's good to know. So I, I take it you're an O negative? I'm always a, I'm a positive person. Ah, okay. Sunny and happy. <laughs> yeah, so, but... Whatever. When I was in the army, they were always wanting me to donate because I'm a universal donor. So yeah. But uh, I was like, great. All right. Well, let's wrap it up. We're at an hour seventeen. We're talking about blood donation. You know, we've come off the rails at that point in time. We've yeah. already lost Vorpal. <laughs> Sorry, Vorpal, if you're watching in post. Um, anybody, when we go into the uh, when we go into screen share, we cannot see the comments. So don't take that personal. Just talk amongst yourself. Um, I need to see if I can have a second monitor to this laptop. I'm sure there's a way of doing it. Yeah, I know. I've got to look. I don't. I would need to. I think I'm going to need some kind of USB conversion thing or something. So. That's just water at this point in time. Although I have been enjoying a nice Crown Royal Black. It's actually a pretty nice version from Crown Royal. So, all right. Well, again, I will tell you, I will have J.C. Connors on later, 3.30 Central time, um, 1.30 Pacific. So do the math. Um, okay. Basically, if you're Eastern, that would be 4.30. I think I've got it all now. Trevor raises a glass and says happy birthday there to the chief. And he's raising a glass. And we will end on that note with 35 eyeballs still tuned in. Hey, get your – go get Nemo's War and then save your Crown Royal bags to draw your ships out of. Yeah, I've got a ton of Crown Royal bags that I've turned into uh, both chip pullers and dice bags, basically. There you go. Yeah, they're hard to get rid of. They're nice, nice bags. So uh, we've got that coming in from Uva. Gross, old man. Yes, thank you. 
And we've got old Bongo here. Thank you, sirs. And I am going to end it now. See you guys. Hang on the line. Oh, COVID. Judd has the COVID. Yeah.